Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Fallen London. Today we are going to be having a look at October's exceptional story, A Crown of Thorns. As always at the start of a new story I will encourage you to join the exceptional friendship and get access to these wonderful stories once per month and expanded deck and extra actions plus a few other things that I always forget to mention but a lot of benefits there. So without further ado, let's jump straight in here to a veteran's meeting. You make your way down one of London's more ramshackle streets. There was a market here earlier, and the cobbles are covered in detritus. While watching your feet to avoid stepping in anything, you collide with a tomb colonist. He is poised by the threshold of a small house and has a medal pinned to his threadbare jacket. Through his bandages, he scrutinizes you, then holds the door open, indicating for you to follow him inside. You have experienced much during your time in the Neath. Perhaps the tomb colonist can tell. Well, let's follow the tomb colonist inside of his house. This isn't weird at all. There is an inviting glow from within. You follow the tomb colonist through to a crowded parlor. Judging by their tarnished medals and ragged epaulets, everyone here is a veteran. They perch on battered chairs and speak in low voices of the campaign of 68 where London marched on hell. A fool's errand, declares one, then coughs into a handkerchief. A petal flutters to the floor by his feet. An impeccably dressed man glides into the room and lays a plate of neatly arranged fungal crackers on a rickety table. This must be the host. The veterans are evidently accustomed to him, but none look twice at his head, which is wreathed in thorns. His hair is neatly combed around the places where the stalks erupt from his skull. Thank you all for coming, he says. As always, no one is required to speak, but anyone who wishes to do so is welcome. There is no judgement here. We are among friends. Well, let's uh, listen to the other veterans. They have come here to speak. The veterans speak in quiet, broken voices as they recount their shared past in the trenches of hell. They thought they were below the line of fire, and they were, but then the ground began to glow. Pustules of light erupted beneath their feet. They ran from the things that crawled out, but they could not run from the poison, which mingled with the mud and drove them to despair. It became part of them, a fifth humour that still keeps them awake with visions of all they witnessed all they were forced to do, and all they wish they had done. Because we're the lucky ones, murmurs a man with rosebuds or eyes. Well, this poison sounds very not nice. Before we listen to the manservant, should we, uh, should we share a memory of our own? Let's share a memory of our own, we, but we've never been to war, I don't think. We have been down to hell, I believe, at some point. You, too, have struggled, have suffered. As you explain what you went through, the other veterans listen in silence, granting you all the time you need. There is a silence after you have spoken, but it is not an awkward one. One veteran breaks the contemplation. Do you often think of what happened? He asks in a thorn scratched voice um so we got three options we can say that what happened to us is never far from our mind not all wounds are visible you learn from what happened and you're better for it or it shall not define you you pay the matter no undue heed let's go with you learned from it learning's a kind of curse rasps the man with the rose petal cough once you've seen the truth or something, you can't go back. 
I was happy when I believed the people in charge knew best. Most days I'd give anything to return to the garden. He brushes a petal off his lap, so to speak. It's time to listen to the thorned manservant. It is your host's turn to speak. The thorned manservant is well spoken, neatly dressed and carefully pruned. Beads of blood seep from the freshly cut stems about his head. Unlike the other veterans who recount their time in conflict, he speaks only of the life he has led since. For years his thorns kept him from finding work, but they were the reason he was recruited for his current position. His master requires a manservant who understands how such things can change a person. The clock on the mantelpiece chimes. The last of the crackers have been eaten. Some of the veterans stand in order to bid farewell to the host. Well, let's, uh, can we see if this gives us a different story here if we listen to a different veteran? Let's find out. No, it's the same. Okay, well, let's stand to leave. You have stayed long enough. The veterans shuffle out the apartment, thanking the thorned manservant for his hospitality. Same time next week, he murmurs to each. You are the last to make your way to the door. He places a gentle hand on your sleeve. Don't you stay a while? You haven't been here before, and I would like to know you a little better. Besides, he hesitates, I have been thinking about what you said about learning from what happened to you. I wish I felt like that. I would like to speak about it, but I cannot do so in front of the others. They need someone they can rely on. Please, won't you stay a while? The thorned manservant sinks into the armchair and pours himself a generous glass of mushroom wine. He takes a sip and lets his head loll. Thorns snagging on the anti-macassar. He glances at you but says nothing, instead contemplating his drink. Or we can encourage him to speak. What could he not say in front of the other veterans? My memories hurt far worse than these do, says the thorned manservant, pointing at the barbs that rupture his scalp. I thought sharing them with other veterans might help, so I began hosting these meetings. He takes a deep draught of wine. But I just can't do it. I've only ever been able to talk about my life now. I can't tell the others what happened in the trenches. They come here because they feel safe, but they wouldn't if they knew what I'd done. And absolving me is not their burden. You weren't there, he continues, draining his glass. The things you experienced were different, so I feel able to talk to you. The valid point. The thorned man's servant holds his half-empty wine glass up to the candle. The flame scatters red shards of light over his face. I have to bid work in a few hours, he muses. His voice a little slurred. So we have quite a lot of options here. We can ask him how he acquired the thorns. What did he do in the trenches? We can ply him with yet more wine. We can share a confidence of our own. Or we can say that we have seen wounds like his before. The intrepid deacon's brother. Hmm. We can ask him where he works. Oh my. Oh, you know of the campaign of 68. I never played the brass grail. Well, let's start with the, uh, you have seen wounds like his before. The intrepid deacon's brother. But I think that's related to another exceptional story we've done. Poor man, whispers the thorned manservant. He reaches into a cabinet behind him for a dusty bottle. 
takes a swig, shudders, then hands the rest to you. I'd been walking for days alongside fields of roses, delirious with guilt and thirst, when I heard a patrol of devils. I decided to throw myself upon their mercy, soul be damned, but as I ran towards them I tripped over a root, blacked out from the pain. By the time I came to, there was nothing to be done. He runs a fingertip over a thorn. I don't know how deep the roots go. Here we got a, uh, a bottle of strangling willow absinthe, and we, uh, he's a little more at ease. I guess that answers the question of how he got the thorns. Let's ask him anyway. The Thorn Man servant raises his fingertips to a flower budding above his ear. He twists it off, and blood drops from the stalk onto his shirt. It's a war wound from 68. I try not to complain. Some of the stories I've heard in this room, well, let's just say I got off lightly, he grimaces. We were all so young when we signed up. Most of us had never given the church much thought, one way or the other, but we were looking for purpose after the fall. They promised us glory, and like foolish young men, we believed them. But what did he do in the trenches? He said that the other veterans might not feel safe if they knew. The thorned manservant does not speak for a long time. My platoon was ambushed, he says, finally, not meeting your eye. Hell unleashed this weapon, and I ran as soon as I felt the ground shake. My friends were screaming, but I just kept going until I could no longer hear them. I knew what I was doing. When I looked back, the devils were herding my friends into cages. I tried to tell myself that if I'd have stayed, I'd have been captured too. But all that matters is I left my friends to die. Or worse. Not the nicest thing. Let's uh, share a confidence of our own. I don't feel comfortable plying him with more alcohol. But we'll make him trust us more. The thorned manservant listens as you speak. That cannot have been easy to talk about. He says, Oh no, I dropped my hedonist has dropped. Well, bugger, maybe I should have given him wine. Okay, we have a 100% chance of success to ask him where he works. He will not disclose this easily. I was out of work for years after the war, says the thorned manservant, living on scraps. Then one day, men came to my door, saying I was wanted at the shuttered palace. I thought my cowardice had been found out somehow. I welcomed their punishment. But they were actually there to recruit me. He fixes bloodshot eyes on you. One of the princes was looking for a veteran. He'd always been preoccupied with war. Bellicos, they said. But something happened to him after the fall and he needed someone who knew what it was like to be changed. My name came up. Goodness knows how. Truth be told, I didn't care. To be useful, after everything, it saved me more than I can ever save him. The thorned manservant has just told you he works for the bellicose prince, the son of the traitor empress. Hard though it may be to believe, he continues, my master needs me even more than the veterans do. They're poor, yes, but he carries burdens, they don't. Ooh, there are so many uh, exceptional story uh, add-ons to this. This is where you realize I've done quite a lot of exceptional stories, but I haven't done any of the original exceptional stories. One day I'm going to go back and do them. Because uh, I have I have visited the Shuttered Palace, but never, I've never seen what lives there, because I've never played the gift. 
So we're going to have to go with the more mundane questions here. Burdens, what could the prince have to bear? Or does working for the prince pay well? He's more likely to tell me how much he earns than what, uh, what the prince has to bear. So, surely a royal has means. Insubstantial remuneration. Oh, well, that's just upsetting. The thorned manservant's cheek go as red as the rosebuds atop his skull. Well, ah, you see, my master doesn't have a sense of what things cost out here in London. I haven't pressed the matter. Helping him is its own reward. He surreptitiously covers a hole in the upholstery with his hand. Okay then, so what are his burdens? What load could a prince have to bear? In vino veritas. Hmm. Most Londoners can tell themselves they're nothing but pawns, left to fall where they may. But the son of the traitor empress can do no such thing. He is troubled, and he is doing something awful to bear it. The thorned manservant sighs. Maybe I'm condoning his behaviour by continuing to work for him, but if I left, he'd just carry on without me, and cause even more damage, if that's possible. At least if I stay, he gesticulates, knocking his glass off the armrest, it shatters on the floorboards. You must forget what I said, he mutters as he stands up to clean the mess. Well, we got a little bit of information there, but we can leave. You have been here long enough. The thorned manservant ushers you out the door. Perhaps you'll come to another of our meetings, he says. I promise I'll show a little more decorum in the future. The story continues, following the thorned manservant available anywhere in London. Wonderful. Okay, so let's follow the Thorned Manservant. The Thorned Manservant works for one of the Empress's children, a bellicose prince sequestered within the shuttered palace. The prince is engaged in something that greatly troubles his loyal manservant. You could make your way to the palace to involve yourself further. Though we could do it to help the thorned manservant. He has many troubles. You could assist with one of them at least. For profit? The bellicose prince must be rich, even if he doesn't pay his manservant well. Or to put a stop to the mad business. The thorned manservant will do nothing. Someone should take action. Uh, I do like money. I doubt this has that much bearing on the story as a whole. Let's let's do it to help the thorned man servant. I feel I feel bad picking the picking the prophet. It doesn't really fit my character's uh, story. In hosting veterans meetings, the thorned man servant provides a valuable service at his own expense, while carrying his own burdens alone. His guilt at being the only member of his platoon not to be captured by the forces of hell. Now, he feels complicit in the bellicose prince's activities, and it is causing him great anxiety. Pity, loyalty, gratitude. Or, all three, are preventing him from taking action. You are not so encumbered. The thorned manservant soon will leave for the shuttered palace. If you are careful, you could follow him there. I think even with my low shadowy, I think we'll be okay. Wait, I already know the route to the... Let's just... let's just go there? <laughs> we'll wait for him at the front door. You make your way through London to the mist-shrouded gardens and wrought iron railings around the shuttered palace. Through the murk, you can just make out a trickle of servants slipping inside their designated entrance, far from the main gate. 
armed guards flank the servant's entrance to the shuttered palace. Can't let you in here, my lady, one says. He's servants only. Society types go in the front. Anyone else should move along. Once inside, you'll be gone for some time. So, we can bribe them. The thorned manservant is underpaid. Perhaps the guards are too. We can convince them that we are in fact a servant, newly employed perhaps. Or we can claim we have been summoned by the wry functionary, a friend of ours. They will not wish to di displease him. Or, if I had the incognito princess, I could just be like, let me in. Look, I know the princess. Let me in. Do I not have the incognito princess? Ah, oh, that's mildly upsetting. But I do think I'm going to end the episode here. It's slightly shorter than normal, but this is a step before being gone for some time. So I'd like to focus on this for the whole of the next episode. So thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Let me know what you think. Your comments are greatly appreciated. And as always, I'll see you next time.